So I am here with Jason Ducaries Taylor in at his workshop in Puerto Morelos on along the Riviera Maya. Um, and we're here today to talk about his latest project in Cancun. Hello Jason. Hello, good afternoon. Can you tell our readers and our viewers a bit about this project? Um, firstly, it's to make a very large artificial reef here in Cancun, uh, along the Riviera Maya. Um, and all these sculptures are going to be put in the National Marine Park. Um, in total, there's going to be 400. Um, and they're going to occupy a huge area of uh, over 250 square meters. Um, and it's going to weigh about 180 tons in total. Wow. Um, uh, you can see it's all various different casts of uh, people of the local community and also international community. Um, and it aims to represent uh, um, a gathering of people and how we're all uh, facing some very serious questions to do with our environment um, and to do with the sea. And we're hoping that this will represent a kind of unity in, in tackling this problem. What inspires you, you think? I know that you've done this project in Grenada also. What inspired you about, you know, first to do this project and what made you bring it to Cancun? Um, I've been a, a diver for a very long time and uh, just within my short life I've seen dramatic changes to the reef systems and, and to the environment. So um, the aim of this project is to, is to help the environment to create an artificial reef, um, to attract fish, to also discharge um, a lot of the tourists that visit this area. Um, every year over 750,000 people come to the National Marine Park and it puts a tremendous pressure on the existing reefs. So all these sculptures are going to go in a, a, a barren area of sand um, and hopefully the aim will to draw all the tourists into one area and to give the natural reefs a little bit of a, a rest. Fantastic. So are there any sculptures already submerged? Uh, yes. Uh, we submerged three in November last year. And where are they? Uh, one's in an area called Punta Nisuk, and the other two are in a, a reef called Manchonos, which is very close to Isla Mujeres. Okay, and are they accessible? To, do you have to be a diver to see them, or are they at snorkeling level? Um, no, not at all. The, the one in Punta Nisuk is only at uh, three meters, nine, nine feet. So there's actually no diving permitted there anyway, but you can snorkel above it, and on a, on a good day, it's incredibly clear. So can you tell me a bit, um, if we walk into your workshop, can you tell me a bit about the process of how you make one of these sculptures? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, off if we go. Follow me. Okay, so here we are in your first workshop, correct? Yes, this is the first room for the first stage of the process where we search for all the various different models and then we bring them in here. Um, they get un undressed into their underpants. And <laughs> that must be fun. I cover them in uh, Vaseline and a special uh, alginate substance, which is what dentists use to cast teeth. Ah. Um, so I make a complete body mold of them. How long does that take? Uh, it usually takes around an hour, hour and a half. Okay. Uh, work with two assistants. Uh, work very quickly. Put all the alginate on, then a coating of um, plaster. Uh, we make it two halves, and then we separate it. Um, and then we make a plaster original from that. So it's something similar to this one of the plaster originals um, and then we work on this and uh, we dress it with the clothes, the accessories etc and then we make a silicone mold of, of this again. Do you use the person's actual clothes or do you design how to dress them? Uh, sometimes I ask them to bring some clothes along yes so they can if they have any personal choices that uh, they like. It's kind of uh, difficult working underwater because there's such extreme forces on the sculptures so um, all the sculptures have to be really strong, uh, really solid, have really big bases um, and uh, of course I can't use metal in any of the installations which is ah. what 90% of public sculpture has <laughs> right. inside it to reinforce it. Um, so, so how do you overcome that? Um, I use a special fiberglass uh, reinforce, reinforcement um, but I also have to modify the design, so uh, humans are quite fragile creatures in sculptures and they have very thin ankles Right. Um, and that doesn't work very well underwater with the current so a lot of the sculptures have accessories at their feet or they have a long dress or they have something to counteract that, that problem. Ah. Hola. This is the second stage, we take the... it's still wet. <laughs> um, 
take the plaster cast. This is of a young boy seated on a bucket. Um, and then we cover it in silicone and then we cover it in fiberglass. And then this mould will be used for the, the actual cement mould which we're going to see. So it's really quite a painstaking and labour intensive it's process. It's really long. I mean, <laughs> from, from the beginning of finding the models, moulding them, making the plaster, making the silicone, making the cement. And then when I've got the cement mould outside, I've still got to work out the placement in the sea, and that's another very complicated process of moving it. <laughs> right. Grains. And so from start to finish, from the, from when you take the first mould to when you actually have something ready to submerge, how long does that take? Um, probably a couple of months. Wow. So Jason, can you tell us a bit about the process of what happens after you submerge the pieces? Um, things happen very quickly underwater. Uh, very different time schedule. You can see that the photo down here is of one of the raw cement sculptures. Um, and, and this next photograph is possibly six weeks later. It's very quick and these are all the um, algae that start to form really rapidly. Um, and it's literally a matter of weeks. Uh, every, single, every single week there's a new organism that attaches itself to the sculpture and starts to grow. Um, this particular one I've, I've planted a, a variety of coral, a, f a fire coral, um, and it grows very uh, yellow, very bright. And the idea that this man is hopefully going to look like he's on fire in a, in a couple of years time. But over time the, the, all these sculptures will be fairly unrecognisable, their features um, as sponges, tunicates, various different types of coral all settle on the structure. These things are, are ready to be submerged, correct? Yes, yes these are all set. Okay. Can you tell us a bit about this process now? Um, well, these are all the, the finished sculptures and they're made from a very special type of cement that um, has a very neutral pH level. Um, and that's so the, uh, the corals can adhere to them and they, they attract the marine life. Um, they're also probably 10 times stronger than normal cement, very strong, um, and there's no metal inside them. Because this area is on the tip of the peninsula, it has a lot of uh, strong weather, storms, and occasional hurricanes. So. These particular sculptures are all uh, reinforced with uh, these special fiberglass bars that uh, take some of the shock of the strong weather. It all keeps them interlinked. I think in this one room we have uh, it's around 90, so I've still got a few, couple more hundred to go. So, can you? How much does each of these pieces weigh? Um, they're all each on a, a hexagonal platform platform weighs around five tons. Well, how long do you think it'll take before you have completed your, you say you have, you're going to be putting down 400 figures. About how long do you think it'll be before you've actually completed these? I'm hoping to complete by the end of this year. Oh, uh, so we're going to put 200 down in June and then another 200 down in uh, November, December.